Hey everybody, this is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad and marketing gunslinger. Welcome back to, welcome back again, I guess. Welcome once again to a weekly uncopyable business program here. Some of my ramblings on what uh, I think I can do to help you be a little bit more successful. Um, before I get into to this week's topic, uh, I just want to give a shout out, give a reminder to you that if you are not familiar with my new uh, uh, weekly office hours, go back to the email that you received, go to the PS and click on the link for office hours this week. I, I, I started doing these weekly office hours that are live. You can come on, ask questions uh, and uh, get answers to uh, your marketing, branding, innovation challenges or projects or whatever it is that you're working on and I will answer them for you right there live so just go back and register on that uh, this week is a uh, having a throwback Monday well actually it's not even Monday this week is it it's uh, that I'm doing this I think we had a holiday this week so um, but this week's program is sort of a and I don't I guess there's no such thing as a throwback Monday not really sure uh, but recently my wife uh, pointed out that uh, People really enjoy hearing about the eight track tape player that my dad uh, co-invented with Bill Lear. And, um, and I do have a, re a recording that I made a few years ago on YouTube uh, that I tell the story of the eight track, very, very quick uh, story about the eight track and a very big business lesson that I learned observing what happened to the eight track. So rather than just tell it again, I'm just going to replay. We're going to do a replay of that program. And uh, so here, here you go. You get to watch it. It's not very long, uh, but learn a very, very important lesson about business and about uh, marketing. So let's roll it. Hi, this is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad once again, back sharing with you a story, a marketing story. Um, actually, I uh, tweeted uh, a, a comment last week where I said the last thing you want to be is very, very good at something nobody wants to pay for. And, uh, you know, I said that, you know, if anybody wanted to know what the story was behind that, uh, to drop me a line or something like that. And I actually did have a few people uh, email me and ask me to tell them, all right, well, what's the story behind my saying that? And uh, I thought, well, rather than write it down and just email it to them, I just go ahead and do a recording here. So here's the story about where that came from in my my life and uh, how I learned it, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, I guess by the experiential method, right? And it all kind of starts with a story about uh, eight track tape players, okay? Yep, eight track tape player. For those of you that are that have no idea what that is, well, look it up in your history book and probably on Wikipedia or something like that. But for those of you that do know the story of my past, you know that my father was uh, the developer of the 8-track tape player. Actually, it was Bill Lear, the founder of Learjet, uh, who came up with the concept of 8-track and put together a team. And my dad was the lead engineer on the team. And they came up with the, uh, eight, ultimately came up with the 8-track tape player, uh, at which they were building it uh, for his company called Learjet Stereo. Um, you know, real uh, original name there. Um, but that's not this. The story isn't about how the 8-track got started. The story is how the 8-track ended. That's what the story is. See, the 8-track, the, the even though it, it's very well known, uh, uh, very popular in, in our lexicon, uh, it really had a very short uh, shelf life. Very short, just a few years. And uh, really what happened was that it came out, and of course it was very popular because it was the first time that you could actually take your own music with you in the car. Uh, and um, and so, you know, very, very popular, but these are kind of big and clunky and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, but that's, it's what they were. And, and of course, you you know, if you wanted to listen to the same song again, it was, there wasn't any fast forward on the original players uh, or rewind. And so you'd have to basically drive around the block several times and wait for your song to come back. So if you wanted to hear Spinning Wheel by Blood, Sweat and Tears, uh, then you just have to keep driving to listen to it again. Well, then Philips Electronics came out with 
the audio yeah. cassette. Uh, you know, whoops, uh, yeah, the audio cassette, which of course is now pretty much dead. Uh, but uh, when they came out with the audio cassette, there were a couple of things about this that really, really made a huge difference. Well, first of all, was the size, of course, was the size of the cassette compared to the size of the eight track, right? The second thing was that you could rewind, you could fast forward, you could record on it. So it was very, very compact, it was easy to use, and it had more features than the 8-track tape player. Well, when this came out, essentially, the moment this hit the market, this was dead. Now, my father and his team at Learjet Stereo, of course, did not want to go away easily. They, wanted, they were going to fight the cassette. And so what did they do? They, they sat down and they said, all right, what can we do to improve the 8-track? Well, first of all, we can record. We can create recording capability. And so they created uh, tape players that uh, uh, you could record onto these things. Uh, you cannot rewind this. The way this thing is designed, it's just not possible for it to be, be rewound. But they did add fast-forward capability into this. Uh, and then, probably the big coup de grace was that they then, because this has a bigger tape in it uh, and has a higher quality to it, they then added quadraphonic surround sound. That's what they added to it. And uh, uh, they said, okay, so we've now added recording, we've now added fast forward, and we've added quadraphonic surround sound, uh, and that will beat the cassette. Well, no it didn't because when the cassette came out, because of all the features, and, and not the least of which was just this compact size, easy, fits right in the palm of your hand, that meant the 8-track was dead. So in spite of the fact that my dad and his team made it better, and in fact, the sound quality on an 8-track was, was superior to the sound quality on the, on the cassette, but it was good enough to the consumers. And so what happened was that even though they made it better, it was still dead. And so it was a number of years later that I learned, or I realized in analyzing that situation, that the last thing you want to be is very, very good at something nobody wants to pay for. So like I said, the last thing you want to be is very, very good at something nobody wants to pay for. Boy, that is a huge lesson. So you better, better, better make darn sure that the audience, your moose, uh, that you are going after really, really want and really need the product or service that you're offering to them. So uh, thanks again for watching. Remember, if you want to join me this week on Office Hours, go back to your email, uh, click on the link in the PS, register this week. It's all free. You can... Join me on, uh, uh, on Office Hours this week. Ask me your questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you. This is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad and marketing gunslinger. Thanks again for joining me this week, and I will see you next week. And between now and then, always remember, be uncopyable. <laughs>